So I wanted to take a second and explain the three different ways we've been doing multiplication in here. Um, when I was in school, we did multiplication one way. We were given a problem and told by the teacher, this is how you do multiplication. Um, and that was the traditional way of doing it. Um, we also in here work through something called the partial products as well as the lattice method. Um, and these were two methods that I didn't even learn how to do until I was in college. Um, and the only reason I learned how to do them was because I had to teach them too. So um, we're going to work through the three different methods, um, comparing them, kind of talking about the, the pros and cons of each of them. And hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how to do each one of them. So here we go. So the traditional method is the way that I learned how to do it. Um, I would say that the biggest benefit to doing it this way is that it's a really quick, efficient process. Um, on the negative side, unless you know what each of these digits represents, 6 being 60, the 2 was worth 2, um, unless you have a, a really good grasp of what that means, um, it just becomes a, a routine, kind of a meaningless procedure. Um, but I, I do think that it's a valuable strategy to learn. It's still the one that I use. Um, so let's jump in and do it. Uh, first of all, with the traditional method, you usually start on the right side. So I'll start with 7 times 2. Now that's 14. Now I'll write the 4 here, and I'll carry the 1 up top. Then I go 7 times 6, which is 42. Um, and then I add the 1 back in, making it 43, giving me my answer of 434. Now partial products is the first method that I actually introduced and that, that our curriculum, Everyday Math, has us introduced to the students. Um, and I think the reason that they do it is because that it focuses on the, the actual value um, and the meaning behind the numbers. So for example, 6 is worth 60, 2 is worth 2, and 7 it is still a 7. So um, unlike the traditional method, we actually start from the left and work our way right. So let's give this one a try too. First of all, 7 times 6 um, is not actually the problem that we're going to be solving. Instead, it's going to be 7 times 60. Um, so I'll actually go ahead and I'll write this over here just as a reminder to me that this is the problem that I'm solving. And then 7 times 2. Now, as you get better at this, you don't necessarily have to write these over here. But what it ends up coming out to be is 7, I know 7 times 6 is 42. So 7 times 60 must be 420. Um, likewise, I know 7 times 2 is 14. And then it, like the traditional method, becomes um, an addition problem. So 4, 3, 4. Finally, we have the lattice method. Now, there are some pros and cons with this one as well. Um, I will admit, the first time I saw the lattice method, I was a bit overwhelmed because there were squares, there were diagonals, there's all kinds of numbers floating around. I don't even know what's going on. So it can be overwhelming if you don't know it, if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, and it's probably, of the three, it's the least efficient. However, on the good side, it simplifies multiplication to single-digit math. So um, it'll really break it down, it'll keep it organized, and it'll be really... Um, simplified for the student who gets overwhelmed when they're looking at um, you know 60 times 7 and, and things like that so um, I personally uh, when I teach it I like to teach it using graph paper because I think that, that sets us up for a good understanding of what the lattice actually is so um, I'm gonna take us over to some graph paper alright so 62 times 7 is the problem that we've been working on this whole time um, but when it's written like this, it doesn't really work well for our lattice. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do is rewrite it in a way that, that will help us set our lattice up. So the first things first, I'll write um, the top number here, 62. I'll go over 1 and down 1 for the second number. So 62 times 7. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box. And since this is 2 squares wide, I'll go 2 squares and it's one square tall, two digits for two digits wide, one for one tall. And I'll split them. From there, I go corner to corner, top right to bottom left, just like this. It should look a little something like that. From here, it's just simple multiplication. 
2 times 7 would meet in this box, and that's 14. So 1 and 4 for 14. Here, it's 6 times 7 in this box. It's where they meet. So that's 42. 4 in the 10s place. 2 in the 1s. Now, from this point, we start adding. Um, and we can actually forget about these outside numbers if we need to. But we'll start at the right, and we'll go 4. And we're adding like this. Um, then we go to the middle section between these two diagonal lines. It's 1 plus 2, which is 3. And then on the outside is 4. And there's your answer, 434. Now, fourth graders are also required to learn two-digit by two-digit multiplication as well. So I would like to actually go through what this looks like um, in addition to what we've already covered so far. So back to the traditional method. We have 23 times 45. Now, traditional method, again, starts from the right, and we'll do 5 times 3, and that's 15. Carry the 1. 5 times 2 is 10. Add the 1. That's 11. Now, with the traditional algorithm, they have you adding a zero. I've heard it, I've seen it taught as a zero or even an X, and that's just fine. Then we take four times three, and that's 12. Carry the one, which it's already there. Four times two is eight. Add the one is nine. Then again, it becomes an addition problem. Five plus zero is five. One plus two is three. Nine plus one is 10. Now for our partial products, it's similar, um, but it's different in that it's going to start from the left and, and work its way right. So what I prefer to do is I prefer to list out my problems again until I get the hang of it. And I know that this is actually 5 times 20. And the reason that it's 20 again, because this is the tens place and this is the ones place. Then we have 5 times 3. Next, we have 4, but it's not really 4, it's 40. We'll do 40 times 20. And we have 4, or 40 rather, times 3. Then what we do is we solve. Well, I know that 5 times 2 is 10, so 5 times 20 has to be 100. 5 times 3 is 15. One thing I might add here is you're going to want to make sure that you have all of your digits lined up by place value. So all of the ones should go here, the tens should go here, the hundreds here, so on and so forth. Here, I know that 4 times 2 is 8. So 4 times 20 must be 80. 40 times 20 would be 800. And then lastly, 40 times 3. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So 40 times 3 is 120. Now, there are also shortcuts that you can take by adding the zeros. And I'll show you what that looks like now, too. Just so that you know, I have shown the students this as well. I see one zero in this column, or in this first problem, rather. I add the zero. 5 times 2 is 10. Here, it's 5 times 3, 15. I see two zeros. 1 in 40, 1 in 20. So I will add them in, and then 4 times 2 is 8. And then lastly, I see 1 0 there. 4 times 3 is 12. Again, this becomes a big addition problem. 5, 3, 8 plus 1 is 9, plus another is 10. And again, you get your answer, 1,035. And our last method for 2 by 2 addition is the lattice method. So again, um, this is not really a great way for us to set up our problem, so I'm going to start by writing our top number, 23. Go over one and down one, and write 45. Now, you'll notice that we have two digits, so we're going to go two wide, and we're going to go two tall as well. Close it up into a box. Fill in the lines in the middle, just like that. Now, again, we're going to go corner, top right, through the bottom of the square. And out like that. 
Again, now here it just becomes single digit multiplication. 3 times 5, they meet here, and that's 15. 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10. And 2 times 4 is 8. So I'll write an 8 here, and I'll actually put a 0 here so that I know that I've at least considered it. Now, again, it just becomes addition. Starting here, 5 is the only one on this side of the slant, so there'll be a 5. In between these two lines here, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 0 is still 3, 8, 9, and 10. So I'll put my 0, and I'll actually put a little 1, or sometimes I'll even write a plus 1 would then make it 1. So then there's my answer, 1,035.